My name is Jason Hertz and I run Box Turtle Farm. We've been here since 2011, growing certified organic specialty greens, that's bunch greens and salad mix, under 16,500 square feet of high tunnel space. I think at the end of this week, I'll have harvested 3,000 bunches out of here. And this is just about the time of year that we would have started harvesting from outdoor production. So we're, we're marketing produce 11 months out of the year, and that would not be possible without high tunnels. We started growing in the field and using a lot of row cover for frost protection and weather protection in the open field, and pretty quickly went up to caterpillar tunnels. At one point, we had eight caterpillar tunnels here that were between 150 and 200 feet long, and had a lot of wind damage on those. Caterpillar tunnel is a tunnel, it's a temporary tunnel that's meant to be moved or can be taken down from year to year. Ours were built from PVC pipe that was bent ground to ground over a set of hoops. Um, so the, the PVC pipes keep the plastic up and then there is a piece of rebar or a spike between the hoops with a rope going overhead to pull that plastic down. Um, and there, uh, then there's usually sandbags along the edge to help with, help hold the plastic to the ground too. So there's not usually permanent doors or permanent structure there. I stopped using the caterpillar tunnels. They were, they're difficult to work in. They have low clearances and they're, they're typically pretty narrow. Ours were 14 feet wide, but still uncomfortable to work in a, in a tight space like that with, um, I think it was only six and a half or seven feet at the peak. So most of it is a little short to walk through. Wind damage was really the big issue that got me away from caterpillar tunnels. The sides are vented by rolling them up and you can't really leave them unattended on windy days. And it's not unusual for us to have 30 mile an hour winds for days on end here. And you can't leave a tunnel closed up when it's hot and sunny. So it just was really unworkable here. Uh, welcome to Millsap Farm, Springfield, Missouri. Uh, we're just four miles north of the city limits, so we're kind of a para-urban farm. I'm Curtis Millsap. My wife, Sarah, and I bought this farm 16 years ago. So 25 acres total. We do about two and a half acres of vegetables and cut flowers. And uh, initially it was just vegetables, CSA and farmer's market. Um, in the last uh, seven or eight years, we've really expanded the cut flowers. So now it's almost 50% cut flowers and those sell through uh, the farmer's market and CSA, but also we do quite a bit of wholesale flower sales. So, you know, probably the biggest challenge in, in our location, and I think this is probably true of everybody in, in sort of uh, that western Missouri, and of course Kansas, Oklahoma, all that, is wind. We are on the edge of the prairie, and so the, those winds can be serious. I mean, we had last week, uh, we had 50 mile an hour winds, and that wasn't that exceptional. I mean, it was a big wind, but it wasn't that unusual. And so uh, we lost one plastic cover on a tunnel. In fact, it kind of did some structural damage to that tunnel. Some of the things we've learned to do, uh, one is plastic has to be super tight. Flapping is what kills the plastic. So if we can keep the, the, the plastic really snug and tight, that helps. One of the reasons we lost plastic last week was because it was so warm while this was happening. So if you have a, you know, a 75 or 80 degree day and high wind, that's much more risky and damaging than a 50 degree day with high wind because the plastic's loose because it's expanded and it'll flap. So, you know, when we started building tunnels, um, we actually, we started by not having to build a tunnel. So this tunnel, this is a 6,000 square foot greenhouse, was here when we bought the farm. And it was probably what drew us to the farm as much as anything. I was looking for tunnels because I had read a little bit about uh, greenhouse growing and knew that that was a, a path I wanted to go down. And so my wife was out looking and Sarah's great at finding things. So she saw this empty greenhouse. It, was, it didn't have, hadn't been covered for seven years. It was pretty abandoned looking. And in the conversation with the owner, it came through that they really wanted to sell the farm. And so that's what brought us to the farm. So the first one we didn't have to buy. And I think that's really what drove us then to be aggressive about buy, building the other. So over the years, we've done things like bootstrapping tunnels where we built them from our own, you know, we found some old well pipe and bent them. And that was one of my first tunnels that blew away. So we've done some of those where they were just kind of bare bones and that works. You know, I've still got some of those tunnels that we built out of scrap pipe essentially. And uh, I have a lot of friends who've used wood to build tunnels as well. You know, the problem with wood is that it rots. 
Now, of course, you can get treated wood, but treated wood and organics don't go together. You can't put treated wood in contact with soil uh, in an organic operation. And, um, and frankly, too, treated wood's pretty nasty stuff. I'm not even sure it's something you really want to have to mess with unless you just have no other choice. So on our, all of our new tunnels, everything is metal. Uh, we, we used to have uh, wooden hip boards. In fact, that's one of the things that failed on this tunnel that blew out last week. And that's because over time, those fasteners worked their way loose in metal and wood, um, just because of that constant moisture and swelling and shrinking. And I just think it's a recipe for eventual failure. So metal is, is so much better. Uh, so we've moved everything into that category now. So graduated up to full scale high tunnels. Uh, we've been building high tunnels one every year or two since 2016. And now we have five, um, including one that is three times the size of the others. And now almost all of our production, except for maybe a few weeks in the fall is in these tunnels. We're growing 11 or 12 months out of the year. We had built a high tunnel here in 2016. Uh, 2017, we had our first NRCS high tunnel, which paid for, I think a third of our big house, which is a 34 by 198. And that really catapulted us into high tunnel production. We've scaled production since then, but since we built that first big house, it's been mostly indoors. Without the NRCS assistance for that that big house, it would have taken us, I think, probably another year or two to really get started on that project. It's funded about half of the other growing space on the, on the farm. So it's really put me years ahead in, in growth. There's a lot of benefits for us to grow under cover. So currently I'm harvesting four or five days a week. We've had eight inches of rain in the past 15 days, and I've been able to harvest plant and cultivate through all of that rain. Uh, if I was outside, I'd be swimming in weeds right now. And I'd be picking in a raincoat and high winds. I would not be able to, to market the amount of produce that I am right now from the field. Um, another big benefit is I'm growing year round. This crop that I'm standing in now, the seeds were started indoors in December, planted in February. And here in mid-March, I've been harvesting this crop for six weeks now. The other benefits of the high tunnels are that I'm able to screen out a lot of insect pests and four-legged pests. We have a big problem with deer here and they will come through the sides of the tunnels without the screen on them. So being able to screen a space in without having to manage like an insect screen on a low tunnel outside is a huge benefit. Um, it's also, it's it's more efficient for fertilizer use and my time to manage a smaller space. This year will yield about what an acre outside would produce. We're in a tunnel that's 34 by 72, so 2,450 square feet. It's just a lot more efficient than managing an entire acre outside. The sustainability of the plastic use in the high tunnels is a concern, but I think that the benefits of it far outweigh the problems. If I was going to grow this crop outdoors, I would have to cover an acre of ground. And this is a 2,400 square foot high tunnel. It uses one big sheet of plastic, but if I was doing this outdoors without this sheet of plastic, I would be driving a tractor, burning diesel fuel, using a lot more resources to produce the same crop. And even then the success of that crop would be more variable from the weather conditions in the open field. So I know that there's concerns with plastic waste and microplastics in the environment, but there's no system that doesn't use some kind of input. And I think that the issue with that is easier to see because we can see the plastic and touch it where we don't see the exhaust from our tractors and the exhaust from a tilled field and if we could compare those two in a way that, that we could visualize, I think that a roll of plastic on a high tunnel would come out far ahead. So all these different structures though have different varying maintenance needs, right? And one of the things we've realized as we get up to this, I mean, we're at about 35,000 square feet of covered space nowadays. Maintenance is a big job. I mean, it's, it's, 
it's not a full-time person, but it's, it's a couple days a week of somebody just going around making sure everything's still where it belongs, you know, things aren't flapping, uh, when doors are working properly, uh, you know, even this irrigation infrastructure, all those things that are linked to growing undercover do add up. And so, uh, you know, I think that's a really important consideration is if you're not a maintenance oriented person, if you're not a construction oriented person, then tunnels are something you should look at carefully and say, you know, is this something I want to deal with? Or do I have somebody in my life who will be excited about dealing with this that I can reimburse in some way? Because they are, they're a constant, you know, plastic has to be replaced about every four years. All those joints tend to work their way loose because this thing's constantly moving in the wind. And so, you know, you have to tighten up bolts and nuts and things like that. And a lot of it's just inspection and fixing the little details. You know, a little rip in the plastic now, piece of tape over it, it never becomes a big rip. But if you don't catch that or you ignore it for two weeks and then the big windstorm comes, then it's a whole sheet of plastic you're replacing instead. So maintenance is a big deal. So when we talk about growing undercover in the cold season, we think of three main advantages. Um, the first one is uh, probably the least obvious, which is workspace. I mean, this space, this is a greenhouse, but even our high tunnels, even our totally unheated structures, they're so much more pleasant to work in and sometimes just possible to work in than, than other spaces during the same weather. So, you know, a 35 degree rainy day outside is just not a work day. But in a tunnel, that's no problem. It's probably gonna be 45 in there and it's dry. And so it's totally reasonable to be picking spinach or planting lettuce or whatever. So that's, a, that's kind of the people perspective is, you know, for my staff and myself, it's a much better work environment. And it also kind of evens out the workflow is, is another way of thinking about that. So that if we just had to focus our efforts on those couple of, of days a week that might be feasible to get outside and do stuff, we would have to just be crazy hectic during those time frames. And instead we can kind of smooth that out by working in tunnels when we can and outside when we can and so on. Um, the second big advantage of course is production. You know, we can produce two to one easily in, in the winter time uh, as far as uh, like head lettuce, spinach, uh, kale, any of those kinds of things, we just get a lot more produce out of those spaces, both in terms of its um, volume, but also its quality is really high. So we can grow spinach outside under row covers in the summertime, I'm sorry, in the wintertime, but uh, if we put it in a high tunnel, we get much more growth and the, the quality is much higher because we don't have a little singed edges now and then from frost and those sorts of things. The final advantage for us in terms of, uh, of covering spaces is just the duration of the season. So, you know, we're talking about quality and quantity of produce, but then also just the timing of it. So, you know, we can start tomatoes in our tunnels around the 15th of March. And those are unheated tunnels. I keep a supplemental heat source ready just in case I need to do it. But, but to be hitting those early season markets and then very late, I mean, we'll grow spinach, kale, head lettuce right on through the whole winter. So it really expands our season to a year round season as much as we want it to be. And that's always something that's actually one of the questions that we have nowadays is, we know we can do this all the time. How much of it do we want to do? So, but, uh, but that's a nice problem to have. Instead of having it chosen for us, we're now choosing what the season will be. So, you know, growing under the cover in the summer has a lot of the same advantages, but there's a big one that is, is expanded on in the summer, and that is quality. In the summertime, tomatoes are, of course, a big crop for us. And I think that's true for pretty much every serious market grower. They just, it's frustrating. Some of them find us, some of us find them to grow they are a very profitable crop and they have really high demand. The problem is if you put them out in the field, frequently 50% of your fruit is non-saleable. And the main reason for that is water. Um, so we have you know, a, a surge and drought system outside, whether we want it or not. I mean, you can put stuff under uh, plastic mulch and you can do drip irrigation and all those things and that helps. But ultimately when it pours down rain and you've got a bunch of almost ripe fruit out there, um, they just blow up, they crack, you know? Uh, and if we can put them in a tunnel, you get much more vigorous growth, you get a lot more fruit set, but then more than anything, you get a much more marketable yield from that because all those tomatoes, we're controlling how much moisture hits those tomatoes. And so they're consistently uh, non-cracked, you know, and, and nice sized and all the advantages we can get from a tomato plant. And then there's also hail, you know, and, and we have not had any real severe hail for a few years, but our first couple years, we had some big hail storms. And some of those were so severe that had we not had some covered space, we would have lost everything. Um, the covered spaces still take damage, but I'll pay for a new sheet of plastic over losing a whole crop of tomatoes, you know, and that's, that's a big advantage, uh, especially as we think of the weather being more and more volatile and thunderstorms being more severe. Uh, you know, there's some disadvantages to covered spaces in those scenarios, but I think the advantages far outweigh them in terms of uh, less damage to the crops. Mm -hmm.